in this short message I want to look at prison experiences not literal prison experiences but of course those times in our lives when we feel bound we feel chained we feel imprisoned our objective is to learn from the book of Acts from Paul and Silas and from Peter from their experiences in a literal prison and how we can draw from that and apply principles into our own lives when we feel in that particular situation emotionally or maybe even spiritually ourselves so that's our objective first of all we look at Paul and Silas in the book of Acts Acts 16 it tells us that they were stripped they were beaten they were in the inner prison no windows, one door, no light, no air, the stench of the main sewer beneath them, in an awful situation, really. But they didn't look to the situation, but rather they looked to God. And this is an important principle, isn't it, in our lives. So what can we draw from their experience in prison? Also, as we will come on in a short time to look at Peter as well and his experience. Well the first thing looking at Paul and Silas is we see that prayer is so important. Acts 16 verse 25 it tells us about midnight Paul and Silas were praying to God. Prayer is admitting our own weakness that we've come to the end of our strength and we need help. It also shows a reliance on God and a trust that he will do the right thing. James 5.13, is one of you in trouble? He asks the question and the answer comes back, he should pray. And the irony is that very often when we're in trouble, when we need God the most, that's when we turn from him and we stop praying. Think of that hymn, what a friend we have in Jesus. And the words encourage us to turn to God in times of trouble. Prayer doesn't always take us out. We need to remember that. But what prayer does do is that it takes us through. And often that's how God works in our lives. He doesn't take us out of the situation, but he takes us through and ultimately strengthens us as a result of that. Jesus himself constantly set time aside to pray. Before he faced his own prison experience on Calvary, he spent time in prayer in Gethsemane. So prayer is the first thing that we learn, that we draw from the scriptures in regards to prison experiences. The second thing, again from Paul and Silas, is praise. From the same verse that we read just now, Acts 16, 25, about midnight, Paul and Silas were singing hymns to God. Now it tells us in Luke, Luke 24, that the early disciples were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. But Paul and Silas weren't in church, were they? They were in prison, yet they still praised God. The Bible talks, Hebrews 13, of a sacrifice of praise. Hebrews 13, verse 15, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. And a sacrifice of praise is praising God even when our circumstances and situations say no. And when we do that, we find a release. That's exactly what happened to Paul and Silas. So prayer and praise, two things that we learn from their experience in prison that we can apply into our own situation. And thirdly and finally, just short messages, Peter in Acts chapter 12, inner peace, prayer, praise and inner peace. James had already been killed, it tells us that in verse 2, and Peter was next. He was in prison, he was chained between the guards, the next morning he was due to be executed and yet, this is amazing isn't it, and yet when the angel appeared, the angel came to him, he was so asleep, in such a deep sleep, that the angel had to wake him. Isn't that amazing? In fact, a, a secular um, 
psychiatrist, psychologist, person that would study uh, behaviour of people would say that Peter was on the verge of a nervous breakdown because Peter wasn't behaving in a rational way. He was due to be executed the next morning and yet he was in a deep sleep. But I say that the opposite is true, that inner peace produces rational behaviour, a faith in God the sort of faith that comes to a point where we've done all that we can and then we leave it with the Lord. That's the sort of inner peace and faith that Peter had in his situation. So rather than being uh, out of order, actually his behaviour was exactly in line with that of someone who knew God in a real way. So much so that even though he faced death, he was in a deep sleep. Psalm 46 tells us, be still and know that I am God. And in our most difficult times, our prison experiences, those circumstances that really come against us, that's when our faith really is tested. That's when the rubber hits the road, so to speak. And it's times like that, like Peter, that we can know that God is is so real and we can experience that inner peace. So to recap, in a nutshell, the prison experiences that we go through in life, all of us from time to time, sometimes they're circumstances that we don't exactly help ourselves, other times they're things that are totally beyond our control, but we all go there, we all have them. And the key or the keys, the three keys to working through those situations to getting out of that prison is prayer, keep in touch with God, praise, keep praising him, don't let go, don't blame him, keep holding on to God and an inner peace, an inner peace produces rational behaviour that will help us out of that prison that we find ourselves in.